Hello, welcome to Gardenville.tv. Here we are in Joe Douglas' garden. And Joe is a very keen gardener and he loves growing his own fruit and vegetables. And we're showing you on various clips how you can organise your garden and get everything nice and sort of planned. Isn't that right, Susan? And he's all his fruit on one side and he's his veggies on the other. So on, on this clip, we're actually going to show you the vegetable side of Joe's garden. Joe, I'm going to take it away there now. I'm going to take all. it away for you then. Yeah. Here we have Jerusalem artichoke. Jerusalem artichoke grows to about 11 feet high, 10 or 11 feet high. You eat the roots of it. It's a wonderful, wonderful vegetable. It's a staple. It goes through the winter. You can dig it up. You can leave it in the soil and just dig it up whenever you need it. Wow. So you have regular supply. Oh, all the time. Yeah. Um, as much as this will, all, this whole area here will be filled with it. So one of the reasons I haven't weeded it is because. In the younger stages, these plants look quite like some of the weeds around. Yeah. So I'm just yeah. hoping as they grow, I'll be able to tell the difference. And so that's uh, that's that. Again, this is an overwintering spinach. Just put it here because I have really nowhere else to put it. And it can do fine there. In just among them, no big deal. No and just keep pulling your leaves off that. Go keep in pulling and your cook leaves your off food. that. Yeah. Put them away and away. Delicious. You go. Great. And then we have horseradish, uh, which right. is here. As yeah. denoted by the yellow topped um, mm -hmm. stick. Uh, horseradish, great, great stuff if you like it. If you don't like it, for God's sake, don't put it down in your garden because it will take it over. Yeah. And, oh, will uh, it? So this is in a plant. There's a very big plastic pot down there, and it's stuck in it. So it has a limited oh. amount of area. That it can so get. you put it in a pot, the pot into the right ground. Into the oh, aren't so you a control man? Now that's control unbelievable. Freak, yeah. <laughs> that's, but that's a great tip, isn't well, it? Yeah, it's very it does useful. take off. They say if it likes you and it grows, it can just off. take so off. Some people can't grow it. For some well, now I, I have to say this is this is um, yeah this is this is only two years old. Um, mm -hmm. My last one I had to um, chase the whole way around the yard mm -hmm. because it didn't take off. Wow. So I decided to contain it here, just nicely contained in this end of the garden where there won't be much activity. Now, this oh, we have yeah. is on the side. Right. So in here now, here come your raised beds. Great way of doing your. Well, nice organised way, Joe. The raised bed, the raised bed allows you to control the environment, and it's one of the useful things about growing things is to be able to know more or less what you put into the soil and not have to live with what you've inherited. So that's one of the things. It also gives you a very good place to put all of the stuff coming out of your old pots and mix it with good soil, and then add a few bits and pieces to it to make it useful again. Right. Of okay. To dump it. Now you made these raised beds yourself. So well, it's clearly, yes, you couldn't. <laughs> you couldn't get this level of workmanship professionally, really. Quite frankly, it would be impossible to get this level of workmanship. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I grow. Generally, I grow sort of rocket along the edges because rocket kind of likes that area. It likes to kind of hang over and be up against something. Just enjoys that. Um, I generally grow rocket that's two years old, so I have it in little tiny little pots actually here. Here's some I prepared earlier. Um, just here, they, 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 this is, doesn't look like it's growing, but it's been here for two years. It's just right. on a second year here. But when I put this in, it's going to be a fabulous tasting, really much oh, better tasting. Oh, that's very interesting. Okay. And um, so that's sort of gone over, that's overwintered, and it looks like it's dead overwintered when it comes back again. Right. Then we have a ton of garlic because I just like You garlic. like garlic, yeah, very good for you, yeah. Kale at the back, yeah. And then we have wild garlic in the bottom right hand corner. Wild there. garlic? Is that controlled as well? Again, contained and controlled, oh, contained. yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah, it's yeah, it's only, it's only in that corner there, yeah. and it's, it's mixed in with a little bit of um, spinach as well. And what do you use it for then? Do you use well, generally speaking, um, I, I just, I, we don't use it to eat. Okay. We don't eat it, but Does generally, it? but I, I just like the smell of it. I like the look of it. It's, there's some beautiful white flowers at a time when there's very, very little in the garden. Right. If you can control it, it doesn't. Yeah, take because over. generally in the garden, it's an absolute weed. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely. Going. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, well see, it's going really nowhere really here really anyway. Yeah. It's, My it's biggest risk is this whole area here. So what's going to happen? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Can't so when will you be eating your garlic? Well, I. Certainly, some of them here will be ready within the next sort of four to five weeks. Here, mm -hmm. these are the ones that overwintered, and the newer ones then will take another six they weeks. They went in in about November or something. They went in in oh, January, January actually, but okay. let's not say that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's almost like a but that's, spell. Yeah. Isn't that the great thing about yeah. gardening? Sorry? You know, that's the great thing about gardening. We're only saying this in a number of clips. You know, you do it at the time. This isn't the perfect world. Well, if you're not enjoying yeah. it, do something else. Yeah. Absolutely. Now here we have. Um, before we just before we move on, oh, there's yeah. also celeriac there just sitting. There, oh, yeah. not my favourite uh, at all, but it's a useful, useful, I suppose, flavour mm. rather than actually terribly useful. Good. So, have you actually managed to get a good size 
Oh all yes, quite a few, yeah, decent big really? lumps of yolks. And, and by taking off the side leaves and all the rest of yep. it, because it does take a lot of... It takes, the, it, the, they're quite intensive, but it, it isn't yeah. something I would um, recommend to somebody as they start off, because it takes more attention than most, mm. of, most of the rest of them, you shove them in and you look like a hero, you know, yep. which is great. Yeah. So it's marvellous, you know, yeah. but, but those take a lot of work, but they, I, I have to say, I'm not entirely sure they're worth it in the end. They make a lovely soup. Right. So if you like okay. a lovely soup, you're sorted, okay? But okay. if you don't, you know. Well, we have a nice soup and we have a great recipe section on Gardenville. So if you're looking for any recipes, we'll Certainly have definitely... I'll put a recipe in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Very useful. Okay, what have we got here now? This is just a mixture, um, again, garlic running up the edges and up the middle, and then various salads here, and then we have carrots running along the edge there. The reason for the garlic and the carrots is to confuse the various pests for each. Uh, it does seem to work, um, although I have to say I do sometimes feel a little bit sorry for the carrot root fly, because it can only fly about 18 inches off the ground anyway, and nice. only in hops, and not in, not in windy, re windy weather. So it's got a, it's got a lot against it, so if it gets one or two of them, who really cares? Isn't that absolutely brilliant? So you feel that you're able to control the root fly with, with not, that? Yeah, to, to, to some extent, not, not really, but it, yeah. it relies on smell. So oh, it relies entirely on smell. To move apparently. from, oh right. So if it doesn't smell them, yeah. So the thing you always should do when you're picking out your carrots is pull them out close to so the meat. And um, the mixture of having a little bit of garlic here and this kind of thing does confuse the smell. Oh, that's, oh, that's what's brilliantly true. The trouble as well, if you've sown your own carrots and you're thinning them, they'll smell them. Right? That's the point, yeah. and therefore I don't do that. But what I do is I grow them in sections and I pre-thin them. So they're, yeah. they are, <coughs> as they're going to be, they're right, not Right, so you're not, they're not sort of flying around saying, oh, somebody's thinning their carrots. Well, yeah. barely fly. Anyway. I mean, it's almost hopping <laughs> around. <laughs> and you have these sticks here now for cats to well, stop this, cats going yes, near so we, your fruit. We, we have a little bit food. of a problem with very large cats and kind of very, very large cats. They're wild, well, semi-wild, but cats hate anything that wobbles. Right. So the minute they put their foot on something like this, they go. They will not dig it up. Isn't not that a great tip? Mm. And so anything wobbly, so they're not fixed. Everything's all a bit wobbly and not terribly organised. But that's it. They just don't like it. They don't like it. To be the way through. And then we're coming down to your last planting bed here now, raised bed. And what have we got here? This is a great setup. You have. Well, this is for peas. And the problem with peas is that um, if you put them in a circle, you lose the ones in the middle. You just can't get your hand through the middle. Right. So you lose all the peas in the middle. Okay. And then they go to seed very quickly and you lose the plant and it becomes very difficult. So I set them out like this so I get all the peas growing up. It doesn't matter which side of the net they go. Yeah. They're growing and that's fine. And so you can pick them at any stage you want. I also mix them with sweet pea which is there to clump some plants at the far side of the net so that you get just get a bit of colour on them. Oh yes. Opening, you can cut flowers and bring them into the house. Which is lovely. Sweet yeah, pea lovely. Yeah, it makes the whole thing yeah. a bit more, bit more colourful. Also, the growing tips of these, when you're finished with them, or not finished with them, but when you're finished allowing them to go up, they make a lovely salad. You cut the growing tips oh, off. Oh, really? They're, they're very edible. And they're absolutely beautiful. They just oh. taste like peas. Uh, except they're not round and crunchy, really. Oh, right. Okay. But if you close your eyes, they're fine. You know? Oh, okay. <laughs> and what's this here? This is basil. Oh, right. And basil and is, why is have you got the basil like that? Well, because uh, basil at this age is very, very attractive to birds. Okay. And, and they basically them. circle over yeah. here. Well, exactly. It, it, it gives it a microclimate here, and it's the bir the birds are you can't see them, but they are circling overhead, They're waiting, saying, hey, wait, <laughs> waiting for us. I'd to love take a little go of that down Absolutely. there. Yeah. So okay. The, it's great the, contraption that. Yeah. It? Well, really, it's very useful. It's very localized. You have a kind of a microclimate. Yeah. The, the soil is slightly warmer. You yeah. Know, yeah. But not not so much that it, it dries out, but just a little bit warmer. And then along here, you're growing uh, just spring garlic, onion. spring onions. Okay. Spring onions. We yeah. yank them out in about five weeks' time, four or five weeks' time, and just eat them, and they'll be gone, and that'll be the end of that. We won't need. You, we can replant this with something else. Okay. And cress, then we have running cress here, and then cress running on the edge here. Okay. Again, cress is one of those ones that likes to kind of fall over. Oh right. So okay. it's a mustard cress, not the mustard. Oh. Yeah. And then you've your spinach, your winter Again, spinach. more winter spinach there, you think. Which is a regular supply of winter spinach all throughout the winter. Isn't that absolutely fantastic? And with this vegetable garden, from what stage will you give food throughout the winter? And then how long will this vegetable garden keep you going now for... How well, many I mean, months will you get, eating-wise? If, if, if you take the potatoes over there, the potatoes over here, um, all of the vegetables here and the ability to replace and recycle uh, yeah. uh, as the, the whim takes us. I mean, we will probably not buy much for the next, probably until November. 
by much in terms of vegetables. Oh my, isn't that good? Isn't that absolutely brilliant? We don't have to. I mean, obviously, if you have taste for stuff that isn't being grown here, then you've got to go buy it. Yeah, you know? okay. <laughs> but we yeah. will try it. I'll try anything here. Yeah. And um, I just actually like that part of it. I like trying to see if something will grow. This is quite unusual to be growing it outside, but it, <clears throat> I expect to be reasonably successful with it. You should be once, once the ground works and it's warm up. Once a, exactly, exactly, once it warms up. One of the things that I would say, just a, just a point, is um, slopes. Yeah, the um, dreaded. What? Yeah. Yes and no. First thing is grow more than you need. They're going to get in it some anyway. So, yeah. by, you know, if you're growing to a very, very thin budget, then you're dead. Because right. there's nothing you can do about it. They, they will get everything that you... Right. In fact, they, te they tend to know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the second thing is I'd say WD-40. Spray around the edges of these Ooh, with nice. WD-40. And it absolutely... It doesn't get rid of them fully, but it gets rid of a huge amount. Because they don't like the smell They of hate the smell of them. Same thing I do here. All of my pots. Anything I grow in pots or these kind of things. Okay. I always so with your pots, you'll actually spray the outside Just of your quick, pots to deter line. them? Quick line of WD-40 around, it goes down to the bottom of the pot, it doesn't affect the roots. Right. It goes down to the bottom of the pot, it's always dripping out. Rather right. Than just dripping, dripping in. in. And um, if you suspend the pot slightly for a little while, maybe 10, 15 minutes, right. all the liquid drains off, but it leaves a residue and they hate it. Oh, wow. So they'll crawl up the side of the pot. That's a great tip, so isn't that's it, Susan? Yeah. You learn something yes, new yeah, every day. Exactly. That's a new, new use. <laughs> well, Believe me, that, that, that was earned in blood. <laughs> Mostly theirs, but some of mine. That's fantastic. I mean, it's so well organised. It's a great visual thing for anybody now thinking of starting to grow their own, you know, having their own planters and able to get nice soil in if they don't have good soil yeah, in their own area. Yeah, it does give you that area. extra bit of soil depth as well. Well, it gives you depth, of course, yeah. but it gives you total control over what you have. Yeah. So, you know, if you decide to go, for instance, the, there's a quite a good scheme in the, in the Dublin Corporation. They have, uh, you go along with your bag and you take as much composted oh, yes. soil yeah. or composted um, cuttings as you wish to. Oh, yeah. Now, you have to be very, very careful because that will come with its own weed seeds. But that's life. I mean, everything has weed seeds. Yeah. But if you if you're bad structure in your soil, I mean, a lot of our soil originally is very, very clay. So it's good good enough soil, but it's very, very clay. It yeah. Have, it's dry. It's dry. It dries out in an instant. Yeah. So you have to mix it with a lot of... Now, this is the, this is the result, really, of you know, that type of approach to it. Right. And the other thing is, you're not actually walking on the beds when you're cutting. I never got near. So you're not. I never got It's all the leaning. Form. Yeah. It's great for the back. It's all leaning. <laughs> and it's all exercise. Well, it's all exercise. Like and it's very, well, yes, it's very, very good side, to yeah. be outdoors and enjoying and pulling and bringing into the garden, into the kitchen and you know cooking well, the, and everything. The, the ideal size is about about seven inches thin. <laughs> Well, so you can reach from one side of the other. <laughs> well, Joe Douglas, thank you very much for telling us in Gardenville about your super vegetable and your fruit growing area. If you've got any nice area you'd like to share with us at Gardenville.tv, please do join us at Gardenville.tv. You can Facebook us, Twitter us, email us, blog us. We really would love to hear from you.